Welcome everybody to our Tuesday Gun Channels coaching workshop where we attempt to chat about, we'll focus on uh, the, it, the facets, I guess, of content creation, specifically Second Amendment focused gun content uh, creation in 2023. Uh, we go live each Tuesday, Clover, with Clover from Texas. Thanks for jumping in. Good to be here. And uh, you do the GunTuber Academy here on YouTube. I'm going to take a second and chat about that real quick. Um, not particularly because I haven't been doing a whole lot over there, uh, quite honestly. But uh, uh, there are uh, some definitely resources over there, some of the playlists and other things I think folks can uh, could certainly find helpful. So uh, while there's not any current stuff really going on, uh, some of the uh, evergreen, whatever, stuff that is over there uh, yeah go check all that out at uh gun Fever academy uh, particularly the playlist section i would i would say because uh, we've got uh, tons and tons of podcasts in the past over on the main clover tech channel that were sort of moved over there on the gun Fever academy channel the playlist and you know those have helped many 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 creators uh over the uh last several years and so no doubt if anybody out there is new and just getting started or whatever or maybe you've hit that uh you've hit a wall or hit a snag or whatever then uh, some of those podcasts and things over there will help most of them are uh titled appropriately so scroll through that playlist and check out the titles and if it uh relates to issues that you're having odds are we can uh offer some advice on how to get that taken care of Right on. Yeah, it's not like you built a course there, but uh, just over the years or over the time, uh, addressing issues as they come up, you've created yeah. a catalog of uh, you know different topics, like you're saying. So, um, just because it's not something that's uh, consistent, consistently, what's the word like an updated thing? Uh, what we're talking about, we're rarely updating it. Right, now, the logo on. Uh, I guess I could start simulcasting it again if you want, because now I can do that again. Um, but, uh, you know, essentially, I was thinking is you just have a catalog of stuff over there that you might find interesting. And we don't want to just have local up here without mentioning it a couple of once in a while. Well, that's true. And it's kind of like a, that channel is more than, more than, like you said, more than a course, more than like a tutor. Um, like, that like that channel is that YouTube. channel is more like a resource. That channel is more like a library. Like, uh, well, and then you don't have like a thing, thing like have a course or a strategy that you use, and you just keep pounding on it. Or you have like right doing things. It's more like the I don't want to say the evolution either because it's just the co compilation of all the different conversations. Because if you have a conversation with somebody who's into fishing and revolvers. Right. That's going to be a different conversation at any point in time than somebody who's into, like Rick Hector teaching ladies to shoot at a, yep. you know, national level once a year. Right? That's just two different objectives, two different things. So you're going to have different conversations, different you know, criteria. So yep. you know, so good. Uh, today we're talking um, charting your course, uh, we'll, like we usually do. We'll start off with what the robots came up with. I do a pretty decent job most of the time coming up with something to start with. And today the idea is, you know, we've talked about travel. We talked about funding. We've talked about other elements. Every once in a while we talk about tech. I guess we don't talk tech too often. Again, I think that because somebody with a cell phone, even with an iPhone is different than someone with an Android and that person's different than somebody with a webcam and that person's different than somebody with a SLR because they're just, do it you know they're creating different levels of quality of their work and stuff so i hate i missed out on the travel you know that was oh, last we can do it again yeah we can do it again it wasn't uh you know, necessarily like we covered everything like you say it's not like there's just something to cover and once it's covered it's over you know? yeah yeah All right and i just thought it was uh that last week um or whenever i said scheduled the show for last week uh just starting to see the beginnings of SHOT Show stuff. And that's what we kind of started this thing. So I was thinking, let's start talking about travel in general so that, you know, SHOT Show happens to be the thing that a lot of us use as our 
12 o'clock up and down, let's calibrate everything else off of it. But not everybody does that. Not everybody goes and not everybody cares that much about something that happens not quite on the first of the year, right? So I, I don't know. Well, let me ask, let's start off with this. Do you think SHOT Show has that place because of what it is, because of its place in the industry? Or do you think it's the great rollover because of where it is on the clock? Like, because it is right at the beginning of the year. Like, in other words, if, the, I don't know, like, let's say the North American Sporting Good Wholesalers show was right at January and SHOT Show was in August, would the National North American Wholesalers be the show that everybody thinks about? No, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Uh, and if you've ever been to SHOT Show, I think you you get it uh, with the with the energy that's there, uh, with the variety of people from all types of walks of life and companies and, you know, from the military to the law enforcement to the average Joe to the Joe to the Hunters Association to you know, shooting sports competitors to, you know, uh, and then you've got anything and everything from uh, the retail small startup, uh, you know, one guy and his wife owns the company and they've got three products. Um, to, you know, the major people you know, there, uh, companies that have tens of thousands potentially of SKUs. Uh, then you've got, you know, you've got the media element. You've got, uh, oh, Lord, it's just it's so much, right? Um, it's like everybody from every facet in one place. You know, when you, when you start talking about, uh, and then it's industry lockdown, too, for the most part. So, you know, unlike NRA, unlike Great American Outdoors, unlike some of those other ones, um, it's not just general public walk in, you know, kids running around screaming, you know, weirdness like that. Uh, it is more of a professional, I guess, vibe on top of it. So uh, it's got that element uh, in that ambiance or whatever of let's get the work done uh, rather than um, you know hey let's let's take the family and go see some cool stuff or whatever um, so it, it's just a different the event itself and not not because the I don't think because the NSSF uh, or the 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 advertising arms that they use various advertising arms in some cases they use to pull it off and i don't think it's because of of them i think it's simply because you get that much diversity of the the community the industry whatever uh, all there in one place under one roof and i think it just leads itself to that type of, of ambiance or energy i think it's, it's an organic thing and no matter where you had it or when you had it or where you had it now you've been g to shot that was not in Vegas. <laughs> so is it the, still the similar vibe, I guess would be my throwback to you. Uh, even if it's in a different, when it was in different, in a different location was the vibe and the ambiance still similar. So time went on since then. It's been since nine. So it was a long time ago. Um, 2009 was the last time it didn't go to Vegas. So, and it didn't go to in 2010, you know, since when it came back to Vegas in 2010, it's been in that same building ever since. So shot has been drastically different since 2009. But um, a couple of things you brought up there um, that are interesting. Uh, but the uh, shot show does, you know, like you just described, but you're describing it compared to like an NRA or a Wanamaker or something. Uh, if you compare it to the National Sporting Goods Wholesalers, that's an industry show. It's just a different industry show that happens in October instead of January. And because it's a wholesaler and it's not the whole industry, um, it doesn't bring in the military. It probably brings in some hunting, but it doesn't probably bring in some of the materials and infrastructure that SHOT Show brings in. So as much as you said it wasn't shot, and I'm not all about giving NSS, I'm going to give about giving us NSSF what they deserve, right? Like I'm not going to give them extra just because they're standing there, but I'm also not going to shortchange them. But because it, if it was their decision, it has been their uh, effort to bring all those realms together. And that's what sounds like you're saying, make shot show, shot show. And I don't disagree. I just wonder if maybe I should have said it, not shot show because shot show already exists, but if a different show would have been at the beginning of the year, do you think it would have turned into shot show? Maybe that's the way to say it. Um, wonder if anything about the timing because it's just for me it seems like a dumb time of year to do something 
everybody else has to deal with their end of year. And like, I don't want to go, I don't really like having to travel at the end of the year, having to pay for stuff right out the gate at the year, having to pay a lot of money just seems dumb where, you know, a giant show halfway through the year, it's almost something to look forward to, especially when sales are down and stuff. Now it might be tough. Well, well, if you look at it from a, from a big company, let's look at it from a big company perspective, from some of the companies that literally spend, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars uh, to facilitate, the you know them going to shot show there's something to be said i think about it being its first of the year in that perspective because some of those run on a fiscal year which happens in like the prior september and so they're spending money on things that have not yet happened so when you start talking about tax write-offs and tax liabilities and some different aspects of business um that could be a plus in a way. I know it's kind of neat, even for me, we book and, you know, typically we'll book and, and start setting things in motion for shot show um, by October at the latest. And if you're out there and you're planning on, you know, a trip to shot show, you need to be, you should have already been thinking about it by now. Uh, and by October, you should be, my opinion, you should be pulling triggers on some of the accommodations and, and other things metaphorically, of course. Um, and, it's kind of neat because I get to write off things that I haven't really done yet. I mean, I've spent that money, therefore I can write it off, but I haven't really, it hasn't really come to fruition. I haven't even really done it yet. So I get to, it's, it's strange. I mean, how often do you get to have uh, expenditure write offs or whatever you want to call it, expense write offs that you haven't even done yet? And so I, that could be potentially an element of it that would be interesting. And then so it'd be it, it's it lessens the gamble a little bit. Whereas if you're spending money, you're right. If you're spending money in January hits and you're like, oh, we haven't, you know, spent all the money to do SHOT Show yet. Right. And the year just started and your year is is going to largely depend on what all had goes down and happens and what you're able to accomplish this shot show from whatever walk of the community or the industry or, or, or role you may play in that. Um, I think it's a little more stressful than doing that months ahead of time. And then you've got that build up preparing and, and other things. I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know that it would, the show would be any different if it was at a different time of the year. I don't know that it would be any different if it was in, um, a different location. I can't think of many locations that would be able to facilitate it quite honestly, but, um, and then, um, yeah, as far as, uh, another show being there just because another shows at the first of the year. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think, um, but I don't think it overtakes the, the prestige, the whatever, uh, of, of shot show. And that's what happens when Clover doesn't show up for the show where we talk about Chuck Show. So let's get into this show half an hour, 15 minutes into it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us live. Today we're talking mastering the craft, skill building for Second Amendment con content creators in 2023. So we're going to talk about under our understanding the Second Amendment. Uh, the second one is research skills. The next one is content planning. The next one is writing and editing skills. The next one is video production, SEO and digital marketing, and then audience engagement. This is dangerously close with some of these to some of the other shows that we've had. Um, I don't know if we've reached this specific content, concept uh, topic before, but you know we certainly, you know, we're always around these kind of things. So as far as mastering the craft. I think I asked the robot something like, what skills do you need? Or if you give me a uh, description for a video uh, about mastering skills needed for content creation focused on Second Amendment. So it was kind of a long thing for it to come up to. Um, but I figured, you know, it's going to tell me how to do skills for content creation and how to plan for that. And then maybe some focus on Second Amendment because it does pretty good at figuring things out for communities like that or for topics like that. So understanding the topic, then researching, uh, content planning, writing and editing, video production, uh, search engine and digital marketing, and then audience engagement. What do you think about those seven steps? 
I think uh, it's a decent, it's a decent foundation. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because I'm thinking I didn't really have much coming into it, so it's not like it missed something of mine or you know it hit all my bases or anything. So I think I was probably thinking more like tasks and less big strategy, but I mean, I'll go with it. It's always interesting to try to figure out what the robots are wanting us to talk about. Uh, so they're saying the understanding of the Second Amendment begins with a grasp of the subject matter. Uh, we'll provide resources for deepening your knowledge. I guess we can do that with some of the stuff we've built over the years, um, Minuteman University, for example. But uh, without you know, either some massive interest or some initial awareness, I guess, to give you some orientation or some bearings in the subject, uh, one of the things I struggle with because there's so much of it, you know, so many topics that are related to this, so much stuff that's happened, so many people involved, so many facets of it. Uh, where do you start? Where do you, where do you get into it? So you're in the same boat as me. You've lived a lot of this and you've seen it develop and you've got to see a lot of the resources begin, exist, and then, uh, you know, evolve over time. If someone were learning for the first time, a kid or someone brand new, a novice, and they said, I want to learn more about the Second Amendment, what do you do? Send them to books? Send them to videos? Send them to a class? How do you, where do you get them to actually learn about the Second Amendment? I think Amendment? one of the, that's a good, that's a very good question. And I think the, the starting point, I think the starting point for everybody has to be, first of all, get out of the Second Amendment was something written with very specific intentional language many, 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 many decades ago um, by people who lived, worked, survived in a much different environment than we are in now. And so in order to start, begin to understand the Second Amendment, this is my opinion, um, I'm, I'm a really big advocate of original intent, uh, especially when we're reading uh, older writings, things that are generations, uh, you know, ancient, even old. I think it's important that we start off by reading that, by, by understanding the mindset, I should say, not reading that, but understanding the mindset of the people at the time, the people specifically who played a role in crafting the Second Amendment. I think once you get into the mindset of some of the founders and framers that were responsible for that, um, then that gives you a little bit better foundation to start soaking up and, and taking in um, some of the, uh, how do I want to put this? Um, some of the, I don't want to say interpretations because that's a bad word, but some of the ways that modern, let's just say 2 a organizations interpret the Second Amendment. And I'll give you a good example. The Second Amendment is, is the most common explanation of the Second Amendment is, well, the people, the average citizenry makes up the militia uh, and the militia needs to, the average people make up that militia to resist uh, the, the shackles of a tyrannical government. And therefore, that's why they cannot keep in, you know, or they need to keep and bear arms, right? They need to have access to weaponry, right? Uh, and it says arms for a reason. Again, I go back to very specific language, right? Um, so it's important to know what those words meant at the time and why the founders and framers used those, those particular words. And almost every one of them, uh, in pretty good detail, have written letters to each other, you know, made speeches, whatever, uh, that explain why they chose, why they did what they did. Uh, it's no different than today and being able to go on YouTube and look up and, and get 18,000 speeches from any politician or, you know, whatever. Well, they didn't just sit down and have nothing else to do and have it all pre-prepared on right. the internet. They had right. to petition. Well, they also communicated. Had, uh, well, but I mean, they 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 politicked for this or their oh, yeah. positions like yeah. a bunch of people came together and they went okay and they figured out they had all this crazy yeah. sometimes opposing opinions and then they had to kind of chat and talk and 
petition each other right. for the change. And that's what you're talking about, looking at right. some of those reference resources that are out so, there that are them talking to each other about why they chose these words or why they want this to be part of it or not. Right. Well, and then so getting back to getting back to a, a good example of, you know, where my understanding and, and through writings and other things, you know, again, we look at specific words and, and one of the phrases there in the Second Amendment is for the security of a free state. Now, when people hear that, they think, oh, that's from oppressors, you know, foreign or domestic, or that's from, you know, criminal element. They, they think of security in the sense of I've got to protect myself from another person, right? And security of a free state can mean anything. I mean, think about all of the things that can, um, can throw your household, throw your community, throw your city, your neighborhood, your county, your state, your nation, the world into chaos. Think of all the things, right? Um, and it's not just just people. I mean, and this is where the hunting element comes in. People will go, oh, well, uh, you know, it's not about hunting. Well, you know, it's it's more about making sure that that society and freedoms and liberties and all of that are protected and stable. If, and if people are starving because they don't have the means in which to maybe hunt some food, um, then, yeah, famine in a state is not a good place for that state to be as far as the security of said state. So, um, and, and I use that example just to illustrate how the language of the Second Amendment is important when you're looking at it from the perspective of, of many many years ago a couple of centuries ago right well, and understanding so, its implications and its scope yeah 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 it's not just about the one thing and a lot of people yeah, want to make I it just look about at one. it as the stability of a neighborhood because everyone is can, is satisfied that none of them are going to rise up and take over the neighborhood and no one is going it's, to be oppressed in the neighborhood because they all have the ability to help each other with that type of right. thing that's yep. the kind of free state that's free from tyranny free right. from oppression of the state for your own best interest. Yeah. Yeah. From the smallest, right? Like the smallest thing would be, oh, we need to all be able to hunt rabbits to feed ourselves. Right. That's a small like thing. And, but you know, the major thing would, would be, oh, we all need to come together because this other, there's this other outside force that's trying to, you know, whatever, trying to control us, trying to take away our liberties, whatever. It's the gonna, journey aspect, I mean, right? Since so, sitting here chatting, if you're going to say hunt rabbits, since some people hate rabbits, they don't want to eat them anyway, <laughs> and it's not all there is, and you're not going to live off supply of rabbits, I would suggest think about if you want to protect your grain from rats, which is inevitable. This is true. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, or, your pea patch, or your pea patch from deer. I mean, let's be honest. No, because yeah. now you're shooting Bambi. But if you're shooting rats ah. that are trying to eat wheat, all I'm saying is that's a, a visual that no one is going to go, well, I don't eat that, or I don't do that, or I'm not going to hunt. And well, then it's like, oh, I like to eat bread, and someone has to make sure that bread exists. Well, a modern, a little bit different, you know. Possibly a modern day example would be the the feral pig problem, too. Well, again, too. now you're talking stuff that people have to be aware of. But anybody who eats yeah. bread can go, oh yeah, I forgot there. You know, you have to make the bread. And rats will eat the rice if you don't eat the bread or whatever. Anyway, I was just saying. Well, yeah, it's yeah, pest um, control type things. Yeah, 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 sure. So and then, and then there's another that. aspect of that too, G. Just to elaborate on that. So when we're talking about the security of a free state, right? You're right. I mean, famine because the rats are are eating the wheat. But then, what also comes from rats? Disease, right? So, yeah. you know, if you let too many rats eat the wheat to the point that they reproduce to the point that now you've got a plague on top of famine, right. you know, that's bad. So, yeah, good analogy. So anyway, the um, I'm going to look at that one, understanding the Second Amendment as an opportunity. So it isn't clear. There isn't a uh, schoolhouse rocks that everyone can recite, you know, the jingles to, uh, to explain the core values that we're dealing with or the core fundam the fundamental elements that we're dealing with or anything. So I think that one, understanding the Second Amendment has been some people's, con you know, lifelong pursuit to just continue to refine that understanding or uh you know try uh, effort to keep an understanding of the current because it does change we are we, or we get to change things around in our world so um you know we have a different regime every couple of years we have different 
senators every half a lifetime or so. So things are going to change and things do change. And it's everybody who complains about that. You know, there's good things that change here. You know, we set things up the way we could set things up at the time of this founding. And then we've changed things appropriately. Anybody who gets too caught up on the when the founding, the founding wasn't a great time for everybody. It was a great time for some people. So the founding isn't all roses for everybody. Um, understanding that, though, that the Second Amendment does have roots in the founding, but founding of the country, but not in the, uh, or but then and additionally, it has has a life of, has had a life of its own, like the First Amendment and some of the other amendments. Some of them just lay there, not really doing much, not getting challenged. But the Second Amendment certainly had life of its own, some challenges. So understanding it and its lifespan is again, it's a it's a whole element here. And I think that shouldn't be overlooked because we have a lack of consistent awareness of the Second Amendment and its history. We all come at it with our little pieces. I think uh, KD does a great, uh, uh, an efficient presentation about this where he talks about 1776 and like 19, oh man, I'm going to forget, 19, oh, 19, 1919. And, uh, you know, those dates and how significant they are to people. And uh, that's an interesting way to think that uh, whatever your perception is of the country, the Second Amendment, the Constitution, whatever, uh, we live in a country that's liberty. That means individual freedom mixed with other people. So everybody else gets to have their relationship with those things, the country, the Constitution, our Second Amendment, etc. And the best thing we can do is work together on that, understand each other's perspective on it. And so forth. So I think there's a lot there. I don't think you just, you know, it's a black and white. You you don't understand the con the Second Amendment, and then after some amount of time, you do understand the Second Amendment. I think you begin understanding the Second Amendment, and a lot of people get satisfied with their initial understanding, and then they move on, or they under you know they they go with the standard definition and don't question it and move on, and then like I say, others will continue to mess with that or re re, re address that or whatever it's called. Uh, for a long time. I'm done with that one. Uh, research skills. I don't know if you have anything else on understanding. Now nah, we can move to research. Yeah, I don't know, research. A pretty quiet audience. We're not really saying much to him. Snob is saying he's going to the concrete show this year. Set a shot. That happens at the same time. I've thought about it because they have better machines over there. Um, but we have a bunch of people joining us live. Thanks to everybody. Uh, Snob and Gizzard were the first two here, even before us. Uh, Mike White is on his trip or getting ready to go on his trip out to Oklahoma. Hope you have a good trip, fun trip, and an exciting adventure. Uh, Gizzard is out there again. Thanks for that. She fires. Good morning. And unapologetically armed is out there as well. I think that's everybody. Or no, M. Gabriel is out there too. So if you're out there and you haven't said hey, then uh, feel free to say hey. We'll say hey back at you for the record. And you get time up. You get this counts as a up training for work, so you get a raise, and you don't have to be working right now. It counts as a an un, a paid break, so it's worth saying hey, you know, hey in the chat. Um, research skills. Learn how to keep up to date with current debates and emerging topics within the community, the Second Amendment community, and how to research effectively for your content. I don't know. Is that how you t interpreted research skills? I guess that. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, that's a like a snippet or a snapshot of it. You know, so one the, of the most thing I would add was, and then readdress that because I don't think anything you do in 2023 is going to be applicable much in mm -hmm. 25, maybe in 27. Yeah. So I'd say get whatever you're going to do, well, but don't be cemented there. Realize whatever yeah. you're going to do is going to kind of change and evolve. Keep going. Yeah, that that's what the uh, yeah what the robot threw out there. Is a real basic thing, right? And that lends itself to me when you read that off. Uh, the, what I thought about was that is like you're supposed to go. It, it did say debate, right? Which is important. And so uh, most people probably wouldn't key in on that word. And I think when you're doing your research, I think it's really important because if you only look at one side of the equation, that's not your research. That's not research. Uh, if that's all you do is, all, if all you do is grab your talking points from the NRA, the GOA, the, you know, SFA, the 
MP, you know, whatever, um, then you're just regurgitating talking points. You're not doing any, you, I guess you're doing research in the sense that you're looking for talking points. But to me, that's not research. Um, research has the word search in it. And so um, that means you're looking for something, right? And to me, you're you're looking for it, it. You've got always got two sides to every story, right? When you talk about something that can be as politically polarizing as the Second Amendment, um, you're obviously going to have uh, agenda-driven talking points. Now that doesn't mean that those talking points do not have most everything has a kernel of truth in it. So, you know, it's really important to look at, at various sides of it to look at legit like the computer said to look at that debate uh not to pick a side not to cheer for either side but to say hey i'm gonna i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna read you know both of these opinions i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna um i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna you know watch listen to you know these two people debate and you know we're gonna i'm gonna figure out i'm gonna form my opinion and understanding based on what appears to be true from the nuggets that I'm able to pull from, from this conversation or, or this debate. So, um, yeah, I would say, yeah, this is a long way of saying, just make sure you're, you're listening to a, a wide variety of things. Um, that way you are not, because if you, we've talked about this, when you, you go out, what do we hate the worst as, you know, second amendment people, when we, when we get into a back and forth, I'm not going to say a fight or an argument or even a debate, but we get into a back and forth with somebody that is, you know, maybe they're anti second amendment. Maybe they're even, maybe they're just on the fence. Right. But what aggravates us the worst is when they regurgitate a talking point that we know is not true. It's just a talking point. Right. That, and we, and we, we harp on that social media is full of memes and snarky comments and everything else. Uh, addressing that and honestly on both sides um, so it's really important that we sort of practice what we preach in a sense if we if we don't like it when we enter into discourse with somebody and they regurgitate a talking point then we ourselves should be broadening our understanding uh, to a point to where we don't fall back and have to rely on said talking points I think again that um, there's a, a place here for if you're struggling for a place to be like a thing that's interesting, uh, researching and offering assistance to the research or links or, you know, f highlighting the people that do research. Um, especially now, I don't know, people think like John Lott, I don't know if you've been paying attention to John Lott at all recently. Not recently, no. Um, you know, by following their channel or whatever, and then just, I guess, uh, paying attention, you know, over time or whatever. They, John Lott has always been a nerd dude. He came from numbers and was uh, introduced or became an, an advocate for uh, Second Amendment issues based on his uh, work at the something like the Department of Economics or something, some kind of government numbers job uh, analyzing trends and numbers and stuff and that's when he was sold on you know that firearms are an overall good thing that the narrative that firearms in existence are the bad is is a incorrect and you know usually firearms in society creates a more polite society blah 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 nicer society and then people can just move on and deal with other things um but recently he's been on a lot more tv shows for a while there they were doing kind of heavy on the and they still do uh, posting the relevant example of the Overton window shifts, you know, the, the little bumps that move the Overton window, uh, instances of obscene, I think is the right word, like uh, just outrageous gun control, gun handling or gun uh, interpretation of how guns are on TV and media, mostly with TV, but sometimes in movies. 
and they'll archive probably for their own research, but so that they can re uh, they can point to it later. They'll post, you know, like this on some crime show, this on some police show, this on some other show, and just ridiculous use of firearms, ridiculous consequences, just over dramatic, you know, exploitation of the gun as the ultimate evil type of stuff. So, um, you know, that had been an interesting layer to his work, and it was an evolution of just putting numbers down in books and stuff. But then uh, he started to show up on shows, being an, an expert witness, an expert to give testimony, to give opinion on a, on a situation, uh, both in reaction to when he posts, like when he creates something new, like a post or a book or something, or an article, or when somebody else does something and he's brought up as an expert to um, uh, comment on it. So because of that change, if you were to have learned John Lott, let's say six years ago, and then moved on, you'd have written him off as just a writer, but he's evolved and by paying attention to the different stuff, by researching the issue, uh, you'd see him come up more and more, and now you know that he's moved to a you know a different role in the in the, in the community, I guess. So I guess I'm just saying that uh, researching is something that it, it's not going to be the same all the time. Whatever you do to research, in the days of uh, what was it called, Napster and uh, uh, dang, I can't think of the thing that was before Facebook. Um, MySpace, when you were in the days of MySpace and Napster, researching on the internet was different than it is today. So to some extent, keeping those research skills up to date uh, is the same as keeping what you're research uh, keeping aware of what you're researching. Clover walked away, so I'm just going to go to the next one, content planning. Uh, Ozzy's the only one that said anything, so I feel like we're giving a lecture here today, just reading the robot thing. It's not like I came up with this stuff. The robot just gives me a structure, so... Feel free to leave comments, ask questions, make a point, challenge something we're saying here, because uh, then the, the show is about coaching. It's about dealing with the other humans. Uh, we just use these robot uh, descriptions that I create just mainly for the Internet so that it sees a bunch of words on the thing and it gives us something to talk about while we're waiting for you all to comment. But we're talking about charting your course, creating skills uh, for Second Amendment advocacy, is there any skills out there that you've discovered that you needed that you were, I don't know, had an opinion on that you thought works cool? Oh, get, I get to learn this or dang it, I got to learn that. Was there uh, skills that you had? Like uh, some of you, I know that you've got your skills from your occupation or your life experience. And when you got to advocacy, it turned out that that skill was lacking or needed or unnecessary or, you know, Gave you an ability to see things in a different way than others. So uh, you know, those are the kind of things you can comment on if you want. That Clover being back here. So next we'll go yep. into content planning. Developing your ability to brainstorm engaging topics. Outline your content effectively and create a consistent schedule. Um, at what point were, will scheduling and planning content no longer be applicable? I don't know that it's ever not applicable to some extent. I mean, even when you're telling your robot, your robot's going to be doing those things. Like that's just, mm -hmm. unless you want to never do anything ahead of time and always want to have to do everything right now, then scheduling is always going to be a thing, right? For pretty much everything. Of course, this. Yep, for sure. So ability to brainstorm, outline. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. That's kind of what we do here, I think. Outline your content. I don't know if we do that here. And then create a consistent schedule. What do you think a good schedule is in 2023 for posting content on the line? When are the hot times? Is it Dude, it depends on... So that when you talk about schedule, that depends on a lot of things. That depends on somebody's life, you know, and, and it's a very personal thing. And then that, you know, it depends on the platform you're on and what type of content you're doing. If we're talking YouTube-centric, um, I see a lot of people that are that work way too hard, and you know they are trying to crank out a video a day, and just it's it's insane. Um, you know, I would say as far as YouTube, um, I would 
a, a couple of things I would point out is you've got your normal content. Uh, you've got your long form, which this would be considered long form, right? Podcast, live stream. Uh, and then you've got short form, shorts. So I would say that the, the your meat and potatoes, for the most part, um, I think this applies to you know, a majority of creators, the meat and potatoes is that normal content, right? Not too long. Not, it's that Goldilocks content, not too long, not too short. Um, so don't have a very uneven ratio of content. So don't do five live streams a week and only do one video. Right. Um, and, and I should say that it depends again, it's a personal thing. It depends on your motives and, your goals, I don't want to say motives, your goals and your, you know, your end game. Uh, some people may strictly want to be podcast and live stream and long form. And that's great. I mean, go for it. Um, but as far as reach distribution and stuff like that is kind of where I'm coming from with YouTube. Uh, the middle of the road content, the normal content that's Whoa, did that just happen? Or is that happening on my end? Is anybody else hearing that? You're a dolphin, dude. Am I normal? Did something happen here? Because I think you're new. Wait, unless my internet connection is off, you just turned into a dolphin, dude. That was excellent. I've never heard a microphone do that before. Ozzy is saying it was an angry cat, but it sounded like a dolphin getting smushed in some kind of a two ball bearing or two roller bearing situations. They say I'm normal. But Gizzard is also saying it's a dolphin. So that was excellent. I don't know what you did, but like mid-sentence, it squished into a dolphin, and then you sounded more and more like a robot dolphin being smushed. Like the thing that smushes Terminator, you were in there being a robot dolphin as it was closing. It was pretty awesome. That's weird because uh, Cobra doesn't normally glitch out. I glitched out the other day too, so maybe our equipment's dying. Say something again. Oh, he's playing with it or something. I didn't know if that was me at first. Um, his headset. He's blaming it on his headset. Or we always thought Clover was some sort of a leprechaun. Maybe he turns out he's some kind of a sea creature. So now we know. I don't know what he was saying, because when he turned into a dolphin, I quit listening to what he was saying and wondering if it was my connection or not. So now I don't even know. So he was on content planning and scheduling. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. Probably going to go get a different headset or something. I don't know. Here's the thing. I cram my show at midnight, so I definitely don't try to play along. I kind of figure if it's too easy, then what good is it? And if everybody's offering it to you, then it's probably boring. Uh, Clover is a mythical green dolphin. I don't know. He's not coming back yet. So uh, that was super weird. Um, developing your ability to brainstorm. I don't know. I, I think you can get bogged down in content planning. Uh, and you can get frustrated. You know, you can plan for this and that and the other thing. You'd like for this and that. Trust me, I like planning. But then you got to get used to doing also. So I think that number three, I would almost jam it into number four research skills and planning or something because I don't know if that's just life experience or something, but, you know, the best laid plans, that kind of thing, uh, plan for success. And then there's some end of that one. Be ready for what actually happens, something like that. So I think... Uh, the content planning, you yeah, have plan and then get ready to adapt and be satisfied with what you get as opposed to being frustrated if you don't 
uh, don't have exact results you're looking for with planning. I think as you get more and more into something, planning is more feasible. It's more of a legit time spent. But I think at the beginning, just an overall plan and uh, get, into, get into gear. Are you back, Clover? I'm just ranting at this point. So I don't know if he's efforting to get a new mic or what. Uh, it's a little unprofessional. We're not going to pay him for today because of this. Um, I don't know what's going on. Now his keyboard doesn't work. It's nice not typing to me either. So we're going to go to writing and editing skills, discover key techniques for writing compelling narratives. I definitely would not have included this. I don't know. What do you all think? Uh, we got enough people out there to have a poll. I guess I could start a poll. Um, is writing and editing of a value? Oh, that was Clover's true language. Oh, that's true. He could have not necessarily had a bad microphone like he's trying to blow it off, but if his universal translator, his human translator glitched out, he probably needs a, a selenium crystal uh, that he doesn't have handy. So we're going to go back and listen to what Clover was actually saying. Oh, yeah, right. Like all of a sudden China is going to take care of all of that for us? I don't think so, Clover. What did you say to that accusation? You're still going to defend China? Uh, you're no, come on, man. I don't know, Clover, but whatever. So we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, writing and editing skills. Oh, I think we already did that one. Um, nobody's answering about editing, so it's just off the rails. It's, it, aliens, alien, or Clover's alien language came out, and it just went crazy from there. Uh, video production. For those interested in video content, we'll go over the basics of filming, editing, and optimizing your videos for platforms like YouTube. And eh, guess what? I'm not going to do that. For those interested in video, we'll go over the basics. Wow. I don't think anyone interested in video can get the basics as one part of a seven-part thing, right? I think that if you're interested in video, you're going to be interested in video, and that's going to be a good portion of your time invested in your hobby and your interests. Um, I think it's necessary to have some level of video production skill, but I think it's like research. I think you can get trapped there. We know too many people who never even started because they weren't ready. They didn't have the right gear. You know, they, didn't, they weren't able to do what they wanted as an end result. Uh, once you start to figure out that you never can do anything you want to do right at the beginning, you have to go figure it out. Once you figure out that you have to play with it first to get you good with it before you become a master of it. And then you start to play with more things. Then you understand what it's like to master different things and you get a better, I think, grasp of that. But I think starting out video production, I would not put it in the list personally. I know that some people think it's key, it's necessary, it's an important part. I think it's important if you want to get to the next level, perhaps. I'll give you that. But at the beginning, I think it's... It's an unnecessary step to give people cause to pause. Where's Clover? This is, I feel like I'm going to, I should get all the money for this show because I'm doing all the talking. So she fires has an actual comment over here. Yes. I think writing matters, especially when you're communicating to collab with peers, sponsors and brands and making sure that your video descriptions are clear when people read it. I mean, I don't disagree. Uh, but not everything is towards that, I guess. And I guess at the beginning, I'd be hesitate. To, uh, I'd say get that as a goal, you know, have that in mind. You know, you're working towards that angle or that end. But every product, everything you create doesn't have to have achieved it in order to be, you know, worked on and, and created. Be back. Oh, no, I thought this mute was off. I guess I have to go on to the next one. Uh, SEO and digital marketing. Understand how to make content 
discoverable and attractive to your target audience using best practices and digital marketing strategies. That I think is putting the cart before the horse, especially if we're talking mastering crafts, skill sets in 2023. I don't think you're gonna fool anybody. I don't think you're gonna put such a fancy, uh, something in such a fancy envelope that everyone buys it. I think that in a, in a world of reviews and awareness of other people having purchased the product or read the book or watched the video before you, um, a lot of that is going to be reliant on, I don't want to say dependent on, but reliant on other people. So if you do those other pieces, if you do something worthwhile and you do it in such a way that it's interesting at a time when it's necessary, it's going to get distributed, not magically, but you fill in all the pieces and you're going to get um, you're going to get uh, shared. You know, people are going to value it and post it around. Uh, the engines are going to see that it gets used. The, the logarithms are going to see that it gets used. Oh, Gunpowder Beauties out there. Good evening. I don't know. Clover is not saying anything. So he's either running around looking for a headset or he's just kicking back, drinking a beer at nine in the morning, watching me struggle through having to carry the burden of this entire show. Knowing that this show is in the top 10% of all podcasts on the top 10% of all podcasts on the internet. He's, he's watching me have to struggle right now with the only microphone in the business in the place. Uh, Clover's microphone earlier glitched out on him and he claims it was the microphone but uh, this is what he has to say for himself. I should say that. It depends. Again, it's a personal thing. It depends on your motives and your goals. I want to say motives, your goals and your you know, your end game. Uh, some people may strictly want to be podcast and live stream normal content. Uh, you're a dolphin, dude. Am I normal? Yep, he was a dolphin. So there was a time when Clover was human, and we all knew him. We made fun of him for being green or whatever and having a green logo. But it turns out this whole time he was a dolphin crammed into a human suit. And he picked today to go back to his dolphin land. And he was swearing at us in dolphin language, I guess. Apparently. Are you back now? Yeah, this, this headset was giving trouble. Yesterday, when we were in that off air, and it's <clears throat> are giving trouble again today. I'm glad it didn't do it, do it during that radio show, whatever interview yesterday. That would have sucked. Yeah, so is that a corded one or a battery one? Corded, I'm pretty sure it's got a two piece cord, so it's got a cord that runs from the headset into those little controller box thing that controls the surround sound and stuff, honestly. But then from there, it's just a USB cable. And I replaced the USB cable yesterday when we had that issue in the uh, in the off air, and it didn't give me trouble. It went through fine with the thing yesterday, but yeah, apparently it's apparently it's jacked still. So I got to get a new headset, I guess now, along with a new laptop. Um, so we had skipped past, or we went into planning. So in addition to, re oh, no, no, I think we were, you were on planning when you turned into a dolphin. Did you hear what it sounded like? No, because when it cuts out, I have no clue. I mean, I don't hear you. I like, here's, I don't hear anything. I've never heard this part. Here's what you sounded like. Definitely sounded pretty, like a dolphin. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it just smoothly transitioned into it. Like if you accidentally went reverted back into your ending language yeah. um, mid sentence or whatever. Uh, it's yeah. not like there was a snap and a crackle and then all of a sudden it happened or something. Yeah. So, anyhow, uh, you were talking about content planning. And I think uh, I was saying that my issue would be if you got bogged down in the planning and never did nothing. That would be my concern as a new person. Now, what one more time? What? So, content planning is the topic I think you were 
riffing on when you turned into a dolphin. I was, I, yeah. My, since, you know, I had to do something there. My take is just that, uh, you know, planning is planning. Research is one thing. Planning is sort of once you've got a grasp, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to look forward and think, what can you do about it? What, what, what's my, what's, what am I going to contribute? Right. Uh, I guess my only thing there is because most of the people I'm guessing listening to this, paying attention to this are new, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, or if you're not, then I'll say it's two things. But that planning, I think it comes with experience. So at the beginning, spend less time planning do big steps and yeah. you know, general totally. directions. And then once you totally. get better at figuring out everything else, get better at aiming your, you know. A, yeah, a, a large, a large uh, portion of what anybody is going to do can be done, um, can be done on the fly. Like a lot of learning and improvement and things like that can be done on the fly. So, uh, yeah, knock out the, the big things, go after those, um, and then, you know, keep moving forward. Don't, a lot of people, a lot of people use learning and research and that those phases to procrastinate like, oh, you know, I got to do this and I've got to get this all planned out and in order and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month, you know, two months go by and they still have it put out that any content or done this or done that because it's like, Oh, I'm still planning this out and trying to do and Or I'd like to do this and then that'll let me do that. And then I'll do that, but I'm not ready to do the fourth thing. So I'll wait to do the first thing. Like, right. Exactly. So that's um, too much planning, right? Like, and like, an idea, like I'd like to get to shot show. So I'm going to start making videos. Don't be like, Oh, I'd like to get to shot show. But in order to do that, I need to take this specific route. And for that route, I need to wait for the perfect time to start. Like now just start. And then you'll your routes will become evident, and you'll see more routes as you become more capable. Well, it'd be more like it'd be more like I want to go to Shot Show, but I know to go to Shot Show, I've got to build up you know some type of following, uh, probably on YouTube. Well, in order to do YouTube though, I'm gonna have to have a camera and stuff like that. Mm, everybody says that this eight hundred dollar, thousand dollar, fifteen hundred dollar camera is the best camera to have, rather than just starting with your phone. And then if you get to a point to where you think you actually do need the $1,500 camera. Sure. I mean, whatever, but, uh, done is better than none. I say that a lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of truth to it. That's why I say it a lot. So snob is also talking about one of the things that a lot of people fall into when you've got a lot of things you want to do and only X amount of time in a week to do it or time in a whatever, a lot of amount of time to do it says I sometimes catch myself planning and researching and then failing to get the videos recorded. Um, I think that that's going to be frustrating and you can get shit on, you know, think shit on your, uh, uh, what's the word, like on your motivation or your ability to uh, keep moving. But I think that uh, often we don't give ourselves credit for the planning is to do success, but you're also planning out pitfalls and things that you routes you don't want to take so i wouldn't get too concerned if you plan research plan hone up you know got a good night jenna i want to get to shot show okay the way to get there is whatever clover just said okay well uh, no to more order me for do that in order for me to do that it would take too much of this or that or i can't do that or whatever so then you figure out okay maybe there's another route and then you start planning again and then either that sounds like it might be a success or you find another pitfall and you start planning another and i don't want to discourage that. I think that there is something that's what planning is about is to understand what works and what doesn't work. And we often think, cause if we all, you know, it's always that this is the one that worked. So let's talk about the path that got us here. We never talk about, we never hardly ask the person who is successful. How many, uh, like other plans did you have that you discarded for this one? You know, was there a debate? Was this one of three? Was this the only plan? And you know, that, that's something I just want to put out there. We don't want to, being a quagmire and doing nothing but planning, but understanding that planning can also give you valid insight on what not to pursue. And that can be, you know, that can be on, that can be invaluable or, or on what's the word like priceless because you can spend a lot of time trying to do something unobtainable with understanding and planning. You could avoid that completely. <clears throat> All right, so uh, writing and editing. I was 
down on this one too. I think writing and editing skills are maybe for some people, I guess, like if you have none, no writing and editing, like it's something you've just never done. You never got challenged in school. You never, you know, that was never something that interests you and it's just completely foreign. Yes. But if you've got like just the basics, you're able to communicate. I say that's one of those things you can put yourself in a self-censorship or whatever it's called. Like when you go, well, I, I know I could write better. I know I should write better. So I'm not going to present this. I think that's one of those things it's too much content because we we think our content is like, oh, well, that's our one piece of content. We're done. Like, no, you can, you can pull that down and refine it. You can figure out you did it wrong and repaint it and redo it again. You can do it 17 times before you have the final one. Like nobody who creates a masterpiece just sat down and got to that masterpiece in the straightest line possible. I imagine if you ask painters or people doing giant works, you know, how long did it take you to get there? They might say it took quite a while or it took quite a few attempts, right, to, to refine it. So I don't know. I imagine you're going to have a different opinion, but writing and editing, I don't even know if I would have put it on this list. If, if I probably would have put it in with video or the next one or uh, just applied it to skill building or something. What do you think? Yeah, probably. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. There's there's so many different dynamics of the whole writing thing, right? You know, what do you, I mean, are you writing for websites? Are you writing for publication? You know, and then anything we do requires a certain amount of writing. I mean, she fires, she fires mentioned it earlier about just communication with other people and companies and things like that, right? I mean, that requires a certain amount of understanding of how to write. True. And having read a bunch of stuff. So yeah, an email going to a, somebody talking about your project is different than a description of a video, which is way different than, I don't know, uh, some kind of more nerdy thing like, uh, I don't know, the, the keywords and the tags and stuff on a piece of content that are only going to be seen by robots and things like there's, you know, you don't write full sentences. Well, sometimes you do, but you know, you don't, you write differently when you know you're talking to a robot, which... I don't know. We do at least a quarter of the time when we're writing or creating content. Well, that's a good question, actually. How often are we writing stuff just for robots and not for humans? Have you ever thought about it? Um, I don't think as much as I don't think it's as much as we might be led to believe, quite honestly. Because I mean, it's a lot of it is a lot of it is fifty fifty. Uh, and, then others, and then others, and then others, and then others, sure, a robot can parse those words and log those and try to extrapolate some kind of meaning to the best it's been programmed, right? But like a human is going to pick up on the nuance and things of that nature. So it's, it's a different, it, it, even though a robot and a human may both read a piece of content, like, what they're getting out of it is going to be totally different. So I think when we write, we need to, for the most part, we need to write as if we're talking to humans, not talking to robots. And I think that's where, when you get into a lot of the other content creator gurus and other things, especially the ones that back in the day, because it's not nearly as important now, that wanted to preach SEO and other things. They're like, oh, you need to put this term in, and you need to do this. And I'll tell you right now, because I've used AI uh, in fact, I'm not going to tell anybody what video it is, but I've got a video that the video idea, the title, basically the script, a lot of the stuff come from AI suggestions. I spent about two or three hours back and forth with, with AI uh, lining things out. And the AI, where was I going with that? I can't about? imagine. I, I've never used AI for any of my videos. So <laughs> right. right. Oh, oh the, the reading. So the AI would suggest some weird, because I got into it with like the titles, right? And the titles it suggests were funky, man. Like it was a keyword, a dash, a colon, weird, some other word, you know, and I'm like, that didn't even read well. Like, like humans are going to be reading this. And I mean, it, it needs, I get what it was trying to do with jamming keywords or something in there, but it's like, that doesn't even sound good, you know? Um, so it, there's a difference in the way that, that humans read and perceive and can 
decipher nuance and what the robots do. And at the end of the day, if you're putting the content out for human consumption, then it needs to be written for a human. That's, I guess, what I'm saying ultimately. Well, yeah, and that's what I was kind of saying too, is that we, as content creators over time at least, we were very familiar. It probably took us a minute to get used to it. And I'm just not remembering it. Um, but, uh, you know, for a while there, we were writing at least half of the stuff we would put into a website or into a blog or into even a video where, you know, we put a lot of time into tags and cue things and different, you know, different ways to categorize the content uh, as effectively as possible that, again, was only going to be read by robots. It was sort of like the Dewey Decimal System for anybody that's old enough to remember how libraries work. And, uh, you know, we were making sure that we had all the things necessary to be found because it was a bigger deal back then. The robots weren't able to read the stuff. They were only able to read the key tags and the, you know, now we would call them hashtags or something. So, uh, I guess I'm just, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm just thinking of uh, those days and, you know, that re changing from those, that mindset. Um, we're just using this as a framework. So I'm going to go dig into some of the comments from actual people that are coming in. I don't know if you want to do them in a different order. You got, you, you got behind the scenes now again, right? So you can do whatever you want, bring stuff up on the screen. I can, uh, yeah. Guys are just saying, I do think that one thing I learned from writing for Gear Report, gear report.com, putting your thoughts down in words helps you concentrate your thoughts and choose your words wisely. It's a good point. Um, what would you say? Like, writing is uh, an exercise for sure. The more you do it, the well, like anything, you're going to do it you're going to figure out the most effective ways to do it the most efficient ways to do it and you're just going to get more comfortable with it so i think that's uh part of that for sure like i guess if you were to write your video each time like if you were trying to script the weekly show you know you'd get different at writing right you could i wouldn't say better but you definitely get different writing uh, gear report is staying off and spend hours each week talking to people about content instead of making it. I don't know. That's a good point. And I think that there's some balance, right? There's just doing is pointless because then you're just going to be wasting time and resources doing things that may or may not be effective. So for the strategizing and the tactics, uh, collaboration with others and whatnot, now, if you just talk about people who are only strategizing, that could be pointless, I guess. I did that a lot more when I was a kid. But I know what he's talking about, and we're talking about a bunch of people that are doing things in different directions, getting together and talk about our experiences. You know, it gives us each an ability to kind of decide or at least factor in the results of others when we're deciding what we're going to do next. Uh, Clovis has a... Uh, Home Invader, so we're seeing what's up with that. She first says I use ChatGPT to help create the framework, and then I edit and switch out using my own words. It's probably important because uh, there's a couple of things. I can't think of them now because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about it, but there's a couple of words that, um, like in conclusion, stupid chat uh, GPT will almost always put in conclusion in the last sentence, last paragraph. Um, and I guess riffing off of what clover said in a little bit of this is the robot is a robot so if you went up to a robot and said open the door it's just going to open the door but if you went up to a robot and said open the door like charlie chapman or somebody you know somebody who does it in a certain way like uh like batman or something like it's going to open the door differently because it's going to attempt to do what you want so if you ask the robot write a description for this video but then if you said to the robot, write a description for this video that includes a lot of keywords, now it's going to write a different description. And if you said, as a college-educated English professor, write a description to this video, it's going to, you can expect that description to be different again. So you can give it a command uh, to do things and you can play with that. And part of playing with the AI is 
giving it different commands and seeing the results and then either using the results that are best or you know refining that. Uh, gear report is saying I've had too many experiences with chap or with the AIs that flat out making stuff up that had no connection to reality. It's gonna be more sophisticated, but I'm still writing and doing it for people. Right on. Um, I haven't used the Bard, the Google one, too much. It's connected to the internet now, so it'd be interesting. I said I had an opportunity to do much with it. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I was really using the, the chat a lot, and I anticipate I'll be using it here in a bit, uh, quite a bit too. So I'll definitely have a chance if I am able to to uh, compare chat GPT, the Microsoft version, the Bard, the Google version. Uh, the big difference is chat GPT hasn't been connected to the internet and hasn't been trained since uh, 2020 or something, and Bard is connected to the internet now. So you can just ask it different questions. It has a different, they both have different levels of awareness, but they must also have a different brain, right? So I haven't played with Bard anywhere near enough to know how their different brains are. You back here, Clover? He's getting into some kind of fight. Um, I wish you would have left his mic on because then we could hear the fight that was going on. Uh, your report is saying 2A content needs to be factually correct, so using AI seems dangerous. I suppose, you know, if you're saying, like, I don't know a subject, AI do the work for me, like, you know, come up with all of it for me, I think that's a little different than AI, give me six things to talk about today, you know, because then it's just going to come up with six things, and if one of them's wrong, you got the ability to figure it out. But if you just say, I don't know nothing about this topic, fill in the blanks for me and then copy and paste, yeah, that would be super risky. But you could do the same if you hired individuals who are capable and competent and gave them poor instructions. So if you have a, a really good personal assistant who's been a personal assistant for a lot of people and knows the job, and you said, make me a sandwich, and they made you a hell of a BLT, and you wanted a grilled cheese, you know, is that their fault or is that you weren't clear or you weren't descriptive in your orders, your instructions? Uh, so she fires the hand. I also use voice to text. So the flow is what I say naturally. And then I go into it based on where I plan to present the info. Wow. That's interesting. So I never even thought about that, but that is certainly a thing. Uh, Clover's not here because he's just phoning in the show today, but um, I've been using text-to-speech now since the, since the Android, since the first robot phone, and does anybody even remember the old, the, was it called the Android, the first robot phone? It was the Droid. I got it sitting right here, actually, and um, this is back when I started to uh, use or be, you know, start experimenting with the robot autocomplete or whatever it was called. That was before Google took it and had it like listen to everything and understand everything like it does now. Did I have a droid sitting right here? I thought I did. So, um, yeah, that's interesting because you're definitely going to speak how you normally speak. And, you know, some of us don't speak as good as the good, you know, people know what they're saying do. And that's going to reflect in your your uh, finished work, right? I never even thought about that. Really. I mean, it's definitely a factor. I guess I should have thought about it. But uh, intentionally using it or not. Is Clover back yet? We're going to take a sidetrack then and look at my old-ass phone. Look, at, remember these? How cool is that? This was the coolest thing ever. A Motorola Droid, if I remember right. A five megapixel camera. Five megapixels. I can remember the first shot show with this thing. That was the shit. Uh, charges up with plain old good USB on the side there. One camera hole. And look at that cool keyboard. 
is like a blackberry mixed with a with a phone. This is the button down here. The button was at the bottom. How weird is that? All right. So uh, I don't know what's happening with Clover. Something's going on at this place. Uh, Gunpowder saying text to speech is a bit wonky when you have a southern accent. I thought that once you talk to it for a while, it figures you out. So even if you have like a different, like a hybrid language thing going on, it'll still figure it out. Um, your report is saying that's a good point. She fires. I had a year or so when I was driving a lot and wrote a bunch of articles while driving. And that's what I was doing. I was driving in the van. You copied off of me, but I was driving in the van and I would talk to the phone in order to create content and uh you know if it's an instagram post it's kind of casual if it's whatever social media stuff you know who cares but yeah if you were writing real reports and things like you definitely want to either speak really precisely or you do a lot of editing right Foss is out there good afternoon not trusting monkeys or robots but if it's a monkey robot you're good to go again it's like two negatives make a positive. Let's see. So then if you want to practice, Gizzard is saying if you want to practice your enunciation, try dictating speech to uh, one of those things and see what happens. Yep. They're getting better and better at all our slurs and casual isms and stuff. There's too many reports, really. There's there, You only need so many gear reports, and then that's too many gear. Um, and I agree, using alt accounts is showing off a lot. John Z is out there. I remember the slide phone. I had one for T-Mobile. Those were my Android days. Speech to text is something will always be in improvement stage. It is not even close to being perfected. Well, like I say, it's, I've used it quite a bit. And it once it learns you, then it can figure it out. All right, I should say it gets better doing good on this side of the internet we're an hour and something into it i don't know what's going on with clover uh he's got all kinds of stuff going on uh but this is what you get with when you when you hire the kids and uh you know they they don't have a good work ethic this is what happens i'll ask the people over here if they're going to do the thing otherwise we'll uh i guess we'll start getting close to wrapping this thing up only because of the time we didn't really hit all the pieces uh let's see so then we've got after writing we had video production and you know i think video production is a quagmire and it's one of those uh, barriers a self barrier a self-inflicted issue everybody wants perfect video production that's awesome but to achieve it it's either easy for some people or it's an unobtainable goal for others. And I've seen just too many people that had something interesting to say and got super worried about their video or their audio. It'll happen with audio also. And then they'll uh, never even try. Now, it could be that they just never wanted to try in the first place or never had any inclination to try. And that was just the thing they used to it's excuse they used, the thing they blamed it on. But... Uh, you know, I, I think again, if you're, if we're talking about mastering the the crafts, I think mastering uh, motivation, focus, and to, you know, getting out there and doing it. I don't know if that's motivation or if that's inspiration or if that's just the the discipline, mastering the discipline. I think that's more key than any of the things we've talked about here. These are things that happen. Video production happens when you put out of fuzzy video the next video you strive to make it less fuzzy but you're not stopping everything for video production it's just one element of a bunch of things and i think that's the key is getting out there getting the whole the whole production done and then worry about the video layer worry about the audio layer do what you can when you've got i don't know clover you back yet when you've got a whole production let's say and you've got all of these aspects, the research, the planning, the writing, the video, the audio, the distribution, and the analytical review afterwards, and you know you've got all those pieces, the video just becomes one piece. 
But when you're sitting around and you haven't done anything yet, each of those seems like an insurmountable task. They, don't you know what it is? Think of the, the Kung Fu uh, lesson where there's a bunch of poles. There's a whole bunch of posts stuck into the ground. And it looks like, you know, well, that's, that's scary. If you fell off them posts, you'd, you'd fall off. But there's always a, a row of poles going up there that is like stairways, uh, stair steps. And once you get up there, once you're standing on top of those poles, you don't think about falling off because you got all these other poles to stand on. Falling off isn't really an issue. It would actually be a pain in the eye. It would be difficult to fall off of there. But from the perspective of the ground, it looks like a great feat. So I think that's this thing. Once you start juggling all this stuff, once you get on board and you, you've got your little bit of research, your little bit of planning, your little bit of writing, your little bit of video production, your little bit of after action, and you do that over and over, the other stuff just starts to fall into place. You start to figure out, oh, okay, I stumbled a little bit there. Let me add just a little bit of amplification over there. And then you figure out where you needed to get it to where you wanted, and you can move on to the next thing. You start managing rather than seeing obstacles is clover back yet i think we're going to wrap it up if he's not back at this point so um what is everybody saying over here no i don't need a guest i was just going to see if you guys wanted to join in or not for an after action or an after show so we're definitely being run in by all the different critters and all the different sub accounts um Let's see. So John Z is saying, I don't miss doing videos or live or anything. It's something I tried and enjoyed, but you guys with you guys, but it wasn't for me. So uh, I get that. And I think there's something to try and, and ex, you know, trying things out, you know, getting something, uh, experiment a little bit with different things that uh, others are doing, especially when we have links and that kind of stuff. So you can try it. Live is a good example. It's uh, different than a regular video. Some people dig it. Some people hate it. Some people are, you know, it's going to be just what they're looking for. And some people, it's the opposite of what they're looking for. But being able to try it gives you that experience that uh, uh, it's kind of hard to obtain if you haven't tried it at all before. So, yeah, it's kind of like a battery. Uh, we're talking about doing an off here, but thanks for jumping for the offer. Um, all right, so with that, um, we our goal today was to chat about the skills for Second Amendment. A little bit choppy. Uh, if you want us to address this again, let us know. Uh, we're kind of, I'd say, wandering a little bit here at this time of the year. When we think of SHOT Show as the reason for this show, at least, uh, the reason we do this get-together we're just about getting to the point where it's time to get ready. People that are really doing it are already ready. They're already getting it in there. Um, pretty soon it'll be too late. Pretty soon it'll be after the fact, and then it'll be SHOT Show. And then for a little while, we'll talk about what to do with all that stuff that you just figured out, all these new contacts you have, all this new content that you have, this new experience that you have, and probably all these new bills or debt that you have also. So we're going to attempt to uh, get folks ready for that, using that as a uh, fulcrum for all the different things that we, or I guess as a example of all the different things that we do um, at different scales, like SHOT Show each year. All right, so for a bit, we'll uh, be doing some off air with some folks. If you'd like to be part of those kind of conversations, let one of us know. Clover and I both offer coaching or counts Counseling? No, it's not really counseling. It's coaching or um, uh, consulting. That's the word I'm looking for. And uh, we can help you out if with a specific issue you might be having, maybe get you a kick in the ass or some motivation, give you a better perspective on whatever it is you might be struggling with or contemplating. And yeah, we enjoy helping out people that are valid. Uh, he's not in here, so uh, I wasn't going to, I was going to chat with him about the uh his podcast or whatever but i was looking at a article yesterday that came up in my list and my feeds and it was suggesting these one podcasts were the podcasts and i was like well that's missing a whole bunch so i went through for a couple hours yesterday and looked through a bunch of different podcasts maybe you'll find some in there. i'm sure you'll find some in there that you never heard of i've certainly heard 
found about 20 in there that I'd never heard of before. And uh, they're all at different levels of success out in the uh, podcast world. Turns out there's 3,500,000 podcasts right now. So it might seem like a lot until you think about how many people are in your state. So you think about how many people or how many states there are in this country and then how many countries there are. And we're certainly not the most populous country. We're a pretty rich country, but there's countries with a lot more people than us. And pretty much anybody who wants to be is online these days. And that's only 3 million podcasts. So anyway, people that uh, are interested in that kind of, interested in that kind of thing, I uh, did a couple of hours of playing around. Technically, it's research, I guess. Uh, Street Fires with this $20 super sticker. Thank you very much. I'm going to keep all of that because the Clover is phoning it in today. Um, thanks for the super sticker. Much appreciated. That's uh, one of the ways that we're able to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, the YouTube That goes to the YouTube monthly uh, income, so that makes it possible to pay some bills. It is much appreciated. It doesn't go to waste. We also have Patreons, people that subscribe to what we do. Most people on Patreon are at the $5 level, essentially a cup of coffee each month. Uh, Clover's got Patreon as well. And the people that subscribe to what we do make it possible for us to, well, for us, keep our servers on, keep the software and the uh, things running to keep the websites up and gives us the ability to plan or prepare uh, for you know the things that come up like uh, bills and um, events and things like next year, the elections. Having Patreons has made it possible for us to be here for the long haul, to be here throughout many elections and to get ready for a year like next year is going to be a not uh, a lot of times people will will blow up during an election year and then blow out the year or two after because they're they grow with the success and the bloat, let's call it, of the uh, artificial money that happens with an election year. There'll be a lot of money floating around next year with all the election hype and people that grow in those times don't realize what they don't have realistic expectations. They don't know what a normal year is because they were invented in a year of plenty. And when they come out of that, it's almost always a, the opposite of a, a lighter year. And then they sometimes have enough surplus to just wipe right through that, not paying attention. And then they get ate up or they get ate up that first year. But uh, unfortunately, we see a lot of that. So hopefully people are spending some time thinking about um, what can work, what might not work, what other people have had success with. Clover, are you back yet? Unacceptable. Unacceptable level of absenteeism tonight. So we'll end this one in an hour and 20-something minutes. I'm going to throw a commercial up for my store since Clover wasn't even in here. And uh, then we'll throw a link out there for the people that are going to be joining us today for the off air. And thanks again for joining us. We do this live. Uh, we enjoy uh, hopefully offering something that's useful for people that are creating channels or contemplating making a channel or being part of this whole thing. And then for the folks that are in it, we hope to keep you motivated and uh, keep the wheels greased as far as we, as much as we can. And then, uh, for anybody that's just interested in seeing how the milk is made, or it's milk, how the sausage is made, how the uh, cheese is made. I don't know what they are. What are we making back there? How the cosmoline is produced? That's what we're making. Clover, are you back yet? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. GearWebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is free patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com.